Hello friends, it's Kayla. This is my October wrap up. I don't know about you, but I feel like October went by really quickly. Um, this month I read a lot of books, like my basket is overfilled, or last month I guess. This book haul is a little, book haul, living in a different world. This book wrap up is a little bit late. I've been waiting for the sun to make an appearance and I've given up on the fact that the sun's not gonna make an appearance this week. Can she do it? No, she can't. Well, let me adjust my background. <laughs> Come here, you little candle. What am I doing? This month I read 16 things. A few hits, a few misses, mostly mediocre books, but it's fine. I don't know where to begin. Let's actually begin with the ones that I have the least to say about them. And that would be these four. Should we divide this whole video up into sections of four for no reason? Yes, we should. I'm not gonna talk much about The Last House on Needless Street by Katrina Ward, no. I filmed a video of myself saying it so I could remember how to say it. Katrina. Katrina. I don't know why this name's so hard for me. I watched an interview with her. Katrina Ward. The reason I'm not going to talk much about it is because 90% uh, of this book exists in spoiler territory. And the 10% that doesn't is the very short synopsis. So I'm going to link you to this instead. If you've read the book, or if you haven't read the book and you're just interested in all of my thoughts, because I do have many thoughts, but they're all spoilery, there's a live show with me and Gabby. But to quickly pitch it, this is a gothic thriller and it follows the perspective of a man who is living in a boarded up house at the end of a street. It's from the perspective of a cat that lives in the house, the boarded up house at the end of the street. And it's from the perspective of a teenage girl who her sister went missing years ago and she is trying to find out what happened to her sister. So she moves in to the house next to the boarded up house at the end of the street. That man, Ted, was originally like a suspect in the missing persons case. And so um, she is going to find out if, if he if something's happening with him. Overall, I gave this three and a half stars. It's one of the most unique reads that I have ever experienced. And because of that, I do absolutely understand everybody's like high praise of this. This is so many people's favorite book of the year, but it just didn't get there for me. Any of the reasons to why would ruin the book. So I apologize. Um, the other one I'm not gonna talk about, I don't wanna talk about, is it called Only Revolutions by Mark Z. Danielewski who wrote my least favorite book that I read this year. And like, I just don't know how to really talk about it because it's not, it's not in fact a novel. It is a lengthy poem and um, I gave it one star instead of zero stars out of respect for the time that it took to build this poem. Um, it is written from two different perspectives I can't tell you the plot. I genuinely can't tell you the plot. I don't know what it is. There's a guy and a girl and they are traveling, kind of. And each story is 360 pages, um, but only half of the, the book. The two stories meet up exactly at 180 pages and every page has exactly 180 words and each perspective has exactly 90 words. And therefore, it does not follow any rules, which I think can be appreciated by a lot of people, none of which are me. Um, just like the combining of words, the splitting up of words, just for like the gimmick of making it fit in this like mathematical equation. It was, no, no. Okay, I also have Nothing But Black and Teeth by Cassandra Ka. And this one is hard to really sum up because it's so short and I wouldn't want to give anything away. Unfortunately, this one was a two star for me. I thought it was going to be the perfect spooky book to read on Halloween. Um, it is at the same time a story of like a group of friends and their relationships, their past relationships, their tension, and then also this story of a ghost bride who's been buried alive in the Japanese mansion that they visit. However, it neither of those storylines really go as far as they could for my preferences. It wasn't as scary or as involved or as explained in the horror of it all and it also like didn't give me enough backstory and enough tension for me to like really feel anything this was a very flat line kind of book like you just read it and your eyes are moving and then it's over and i felt nothing <laughs> this felt like the third book 
in a novella series. Next up is Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris. Unlike these ones, which I didn't love, uh, and that's why like I can't really explain them in a great way. This one I really enjoyed, but I can't explain too thoroughly because not a lot happens in here in regards to different themes. It's the same story throughout the entire thing. You're going through um, the life of this married couple through a couple different timelines. One when they were just meeting and then once they've been married for a while. From the outside they look like a perfect married couple but behind closed doors things are very um, dangerous and terrible and they continue to be terrible throughout the entire book. But it's a really important story and I think it's extremely well told and well done and the direction that it goes and how it ends is how a book like this should end. And so it's the type of suspense story that I wouldn't recommend for somebody who like loves twists and turns and reveals. It's just a well-paced, interestingly told um, dynamic between this married couple. How do we pick the next four? Okay, these four are gonna be books that you as an outsider could look at and think they're gonna be a perfect book for me, but they weren't. And here they are. So let's get into it. A Touch of Jen by Beth Morgan. <sighs> this is a story. I'm like, how do I sum up this synopsis? Um, there is a couple who are very like awkward and cringy and like weird to read from their perspectives. Um, and they become obsessed with this woman on Instagram who Remy knows, like knew at a previous job that he worked, but he gets his girlfriend Alicia into this like obsession with this girl named Jen. They like look at all her photos and they talk about what she's up to and they role play and pretend that they're her um, and then eventually become a part like of her life kind of insert themselves into her life. And it's like this whole big commentary on I'm sure many things that I didn't even grasp, but like um, expectations and you know social media idolizing. It's also an interesting conversation about loneliness and voyeurism and how this guy like brings his girlfriend into his loneliness and seclusion and experiences obsession together. Um, it gets a little horror-y but not in the type of horror that I just enjoy. And that's not plot specific, it's more tone. I feel like a lot of horror, um, the way that you create horror is with the tone. And so with both of these books actually, um, this is Night Bitch by Rachel Yoder, both of these play so interestingly and like I could say in a, in a talented way, I'm sure. If you're analyzing the success of the tone, there's so much main mundane activity for so long and then you'll have like animal cruelty or you'll have just a really uncomfortable scene out of nowhere. I feel like suspense and thrillers so often build to that, but with horror, it comes out of nowhere and the tone is just so well-intentioned. And sometimes it's just not something that I can fully appreciate as a reader. Overall, I gave this two stars. I gave Night Bitch three stars because there were some like discussions that definitely resonate. Um, this is a whole book about motherhood. It's a whole commentary on um, parenting and especially like sexism and expectations placed on women and like how to be a good parent and how society sets you up for failure. And in it, this woman believes she's turning into a dog and she like brings her son along with her and I think there's interesting things kind of about like parenting choices and how like people perceive you from the outside and when you think you're doing the right thing and raising your child the right way and like living your most authentic self whether it be a dog or a human your choices will always be challenged. I feel like I've said this about quite a few books this year but a lot of my ratings have to do with like respect for the craft and like I, I get what it's doing, but I didn't enjoy the journey. Like I don't actually like reading books about motherhood. Um, the books that I have enjoyed in the past about motherhood, I have loved them in spite of the fact that they're about motherhood and they're about like having a spouse who isn't doing enough and feeling unappreciated and feeling like your career has to be on hold and questioning like how valuable and worthy you are. Like I don't like reading that. As a mother, I can respect the hell out of the need for this conversation, 
but I can also just not enjoy reading about it. So that's a three. But it also is one of my most recommended books of the year. I think normal people will get a lot out of it. Next up we have Summer Suns by Lee Mandelow. Uh, this was an arc provided by Tor which I muchly appreciate. Unfortunately I only gave it two and a half stars. Much like what I said about Nothing But Blackened Teeth, this felt like not the first book in a series and I could have enjoyed it more if it was part of a series, if it was the finale of a series. The second book in a series. Like this was the Dream Thieves. This is a paranormal southern gothic queer story. It takes place at university. We're following a guy whose best friend went off to university and supposedly took his own life but he doesn't believe that his friend would ever do that. Um, he goes to move in with him as he's supposed to and like get to know all his roommates and take similar classes but now he has to do that on his own because his friend is no longer there. There are good friendship vibes, there's relationships past and present that we get to talk about, there are psychics, there are ghosts, there are sex and drugs and car racing. I feel like it had a lot of elements that I could enjoy which is why I wanted to read it to begin with um, but there's too much already established that I want to be there for which is why I'm sure I would prefer this if we got like a whole book before this one where we learned about a lot of the things that these characters go through because there's so much happening. Um, there are so many different characters and so many different plot lines and so many different scenes that could have been stretched out into multiple books and it would have given me time to learn more about these characters and their dynamics and feel more invested in everything. Much like a lot of the books that I read, I feel like this covers so many topics that I can still appreciate. I think it's really well done as far as themes go of like sexism and like internalized misogyny and homophobia. Something that I love is when my fantasy books reference real world things and so like there's all of these paranormal elements but they're all a metaphor for real life issues and that's great and it did it well and I would still recommend this again to a lot of people but it just it didn't get there for me. Lastly for this section of books that you think I could love but then didn't I have The Atlas Six by Olive E. Blake which is the first book in a series and I will continue in the series even though I only gave this three stars. I think there is potential here. I know so many people absolutely love this book so for a lot of you it already has met its potential but I just mean like as a world building as a magic system I am intrigued enough to continue and I think it could go to places that I that I enjoy. This book took me so long to read because I never wanted to pick it back up. Like when I was reading it I was enjoying it just fine. I thought it was fine but I never had a motivation to pick it back up and there are so many chapters and so many perspectives and it just goes on and on and on that it was hard to convince myself to pick it back up. There are all of these like magical people in the world and everybody has like different kind of abilities and they're hand selected to be a part of this like institute, secret society. There are six of them and they know that only five will get to like continue. It's like this tournament competition kind of. They're protecting um, these materials kind of and they're training kind of for a future they're not really sure about. So this actually has something in common with another book I'm going to talk about in a second, Vita Nostra, where like all of these characters know nothing about this place that they've been invited to which I think is a really interesting premise. I've also read books that have to do with characters who are like vying to be a part of this like grander school secret society but I think it's cooler um, that they when they don't know about it at all and they're suddenly just invited and thrust into this world. But the problem with that is you as a reader have to learn along with the characters everything from scratch about the secret society and sometimes there are just too there's too much going on and not enough time spent explaining those things to really grasp it. This is a really character-led story which I typically love but the thing about these hand-selected participants is that their scenes feel so repetitive. I feel like the same character is described six different times in the book. Every time a character sees a, a certain character she's described the same way. Her character has been so fully realized by 50 pages in that like I've had enough of it and I'm ready for plot. My number one issue was pacing. I felt like we kept building up to something happening 
And like a couple times something did happen, but the timing of it was so weird. We would have this big scene and then the next day it would be back to just like casual conversations in the den. And then I was waiting for the next big scene and it never came. Still love the concept, still think all the characters are interesting, and I'm intrigued to see where the series goes from here. I have lost sight of how to organize the last eight, um, but I'm gonna keep my four favorites till the end. So this four we could call um, interesting concepts but didn't live up to their fullest potential, but some of them I still enjoyed. We've got a two star, a two star, a three star, and a four star. This is not my best stack. Okay, this is XX by Ryan Hughes. This is a science fiction uh, ambitious novel. Um, there's a lot of things to look at in here from pages of binary to more pages of binary to articles and um, uh, communication from aliens. Um, letters. We've got interviews. We've got a novel inside the novel. This is written by like a graphic designer and I think that's very evident and it's an interesting concept. I typically enjoy mixed media but I enjoy mixed media when mm, it's cleverly organized. So you could say the documents and all of the things themselves are clever in their concept. This is a first contact story. We've got astronauts. We've got a tech company interpreting um, communication from aliens. We've got commentary on like consciousness and control, identity, and consent. But I like my mixed media when it feels like there's a clear intent with it and it's not just for the gimmick. Um, like I want my media to reference each other. So there's a reason for why this article's here and then this interview is next and then this is inserted and it just felt too chaotic to fully enjoy. There were aspects that I enjoyed like the tech team as a designer, as a coder, as somebody who's worked in developing. It was fun, those portions, and it was intriguing reading about those three people specifically and when they were at work and what they were doing, but I needed so much more of their dynamic. I needed their dialogue to be better. I needed their backstories to be better. But with that said, this is one of the most memorable books that I've read this year. I have very clear memories of like what went on in it and all of the interesting things that got revealed. Um, but they're just like, there wasn't enough explanation. I don't think any portion of this book was quite enough. It didn't quite live up to its potential. The next one that didn't live up to its potential isn't really fair for me to critique because I didn't like this author's previous work anyway. This was specifically for my third times a charm series where I read authors for the third time that I previously have disliked to see if they have something out there that I can enjoy and therefore I should pick up, continue to pick up from them. So for me, A Slow Fire Burning by Paula Hawkins, I can't say is my most disappointing mystery of the year because my expectations were very low. So instead I have to say it's my least favorite mystery of the year, which doesn't feel any better. But this is one of those cases where it's not like the twist and the reveals that didn't work for me. Like it's the entire book. It's the actual writing. It's the actual development of characters. I gave it a one and a half, which sounds so harsh because I don't think this book did like overtly terrible things. I'm not like gonna scream from the rooftops. Like nobody ever picked this book up. It's terrible. It's a very, very, very slow, dragged out mystery considering it's only 300 pages. Uh, it's about a man who's discovered murdered in a houseboat and the three women kind of connected to him or who are like suspects. I think the mystery itself could be interesting, could be intriguing, the reveals could be fine, but the fact that we spend the entire book with these three women and we're just hearing about their previous tragedies and traumas but not in a perspective that makes sense to me and not in a timeline that makes sense to me. Not as in I was confused but as in I was not compelled by the style. I don't like how Paula Hawkins introduces her characters. I don't like the things that she makes her characters go through and the commentary that she has on it. I think this could be more successful if it was written in first person because then it would have felt more authentic the feelings that the characters are having and how they view themselves 
rather than feeling like uncomfortable with the way that they're being described. I don't have much to talk about as far as the plot goes. I've actually forgotten the entire book at this point. I don't even remember who done it in the end. And that's sad because I read it for a vlog and everything. Um, next up I read for the same vlog and that is Alice Feeney Rock Paper Scissors. This one I thought had potential because everybody has been loving it this year and this is one I completely understand. I think the people who love this are completely justified. I think the people who hate it are justified too. This has a twist that I have enjoyed in the past but Alice Feeney as an author is far too predictable for me. She doesn't introduce enough like storylines and red herrings um, for me to enjoy the sense of confusion that I go into a suspense mystery thriller looking for. This is a story about a husband and wife who go to this like isolated chapel in the middle of winter. The vibes are 10 out of 10. Like the atmosphere is incredible. If I enjoyed the plot, this is something that I would reread because I think the setup and description is just so good. Um, both of them have a different goal with going on this trip together. It's an anniversary little mini vacation and we're also reading these interesting letters um, based on anniversary gifts. So it'll be like, it's our second anniversary and the whatever is cotton this year. So here's the gift I got. And like, let me talk to you husband in this letter about like what the last year of our life has been like. It's still an interesting setup. I wish I loved this, but I could only give it three stars. And then lastly, in this category, I gave it four stars, but I still don't think it lived up to its fullest potential because I'm just waiting for another Megan Miranda to be five stars for me. It's been a long time. I've said it before, but I would rather read an author that I consistently give one star and five stars than to constantly pick up books and give them four and three over and over and over again because I just know that it's gonna constantly be a four. Like, which is a good rating, but I just wanna read something from her that is just like blow my socks off blow my socks off, knock my socks off, <laughs> blow my mind, incredible. This is a slow like suburban drama um, that is really skillfully done in my opinion. I know this isn't getting great ratings, but I think it's a solid mystery. I think the timing is really good. I think that the chapter breaks are well like organized. I think the story is told in a great like digestible way. It basically follows this woman named Harper and Harper's friend Ruby um, supposedly murdered this couple and then she was getting convicted. Her conviction was overturned and now she's back in town and she's moved in with Harper. And it's like all of these neighborhood dynamics where like everyone has something to hide and everyone's gossiping about each other and Ruby just like inserts herself back into everybody's life as if nothing happened and expects to just be like included in everything again but also she wants revenge and some people want revenge against her because they think that she's guilty. Much like the title of this being slow well describes the plot itself. This one being quiet well describes it as well. Don't go into this thinking it's this over-the-top thriller that I typically recommend. It just has a lot of neighborhood dynamics that I think was really fun. The plot takes like a turn halfway through that I wasn't expecting that I found really interesting. I enjoyed the reveals at the end. There's more than one reveal which I always think is fun and I just think it's a skillfully told story and I will continue to pick up Megan Miranda over and over and over again but I'm waiting for that Mm, waiting for that five star. My last stack of four is just my favorites. I guess that's how I'm organizing them. This again was a four star thriller, but this one, even though I gave it the same rating, is far more recommendable as far as my typical taste with mystery thrillers that you like know me for, I guess. So in this story, we also have an interesting neighborhood dynamic. Um, 11 years, I think it's 11 years ago, um, three people went missing. We had a woman and then we had a woman and her daughter. We're hopping through a lot of different timelines and a couple different POVs. I'm not going to tell you who they all are because I actually think it's interesting to find out as you're reading when these POVs come in and why because there are some perspectives that are only in the future timeline, the after, and some that are only in before, some that are in both, and some that you don't know when they're going to come in. But we're basically following some of the people who went missing before and after, 
some of the family members of the people who went missing, and some of the various neighbors. I think this one again is really well crafted with all of the different perspectives. I don't find it confusing at all, um, but if you do get confused by mysteries like this, the audiobook for this is incredible. It is available on Libro FM as well as Vita Nostra, which is where I listen to these, so I will link I'll put my link down below if you want to sign up. But basically in the after timeline, one of the missing people returns to town. But instead of just like hearing from her and getting her like reinserting herself into the world, which we do um, for portions, we just abruptly get dropped into different timelines throughout the book instead of like fully getting the satisfaction of like understanding everything that it's so well timed when we slip into a different perspective. It's like every chapter is a cliffhanger, which is super fun. The ending is ridiculous and over the top. Uh, so if you don't typically like that, tread lightly. But yeah, as far as my stack of favorite thrillers of the year, um, I think I've only given a couple five stars. So that's definitely in that stack. The one, the one of the only thrillers that I've given five stars this year is In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. And this was just so much fun. It was like deliciously dark and sexy at times. There was so much intrigue in here and it's just my type of story. Like we have this group of friends who went to college together and then 10 years after graduation we're following one main girl Jessica um, who's one of their friends in the friend group was murdered and kind of everybody is a suspect and everybody had shady things going on back in the day with relationships and with money and with their academics and so Jessica returns to the reunion just determined to seem like the perfect successful woman to kind of make up for things that have happened in the past um, and then there's somebody at the reunion who's convinced that somebody in the friend group is responsible and wants to expose that person. So this is another super atmospheric thriller. The descriptions of um, the campus and the places, the rooms that they end up in where they're being questioned are just, it feels like you're there. It felt very cinematic. It was again over the top and wild. You mostly get one perspective but then there's a couple other little ones inserted that just made it just perfect. Very if we we're villains gossip girl vibes. Um, very much recommend if you like the types of thrillers that I do. Next up I'll talk about Vita Nostra. Uh, this is a really hard one to describe. I mentioned it in a vlog and I really like, just like couldn't talk about it. There's really not much plot to discuss in this so it makes it tough. But like I mentioned earlier it's like an academy where you have to be invited. You don't know anything about it and everybody who arrives um, doesn't really know what they're in for and throughout the entire book they don't they don't know what they're there for like nobody understands what this magical school is teaching them what they're supposed to take away what they're doing in the future what they're learning what they're training for like you just don't know and you're very much in the mind of Sasha who is this like 16 year old girl at the beginning of the book um, it starts out with her being given these coins by this mysterious man um, who convinces her to like do just like weird uncomfortable things to like earn her place. It's definitely a story about like control and coercion. She starts at this school and the school starts to become like all-encompassing and like the only thing that matters. She can't really go home and visit her family because they will just not understand her. Weird things start happening to her um, that only people at the school could possibly understand but even then like you can't fully share what's going on with you with your fellow classmates because it's also like a competition of who can really embody all of like the science and fantasy elements that the teachers are trying to get you to like take on mentally. It's a very internal book, a very like vague, weird, like what's reality kind of story. It reminds me a lot of Catherine House, but it does give more answers and it is more academic focused. And there are like specific teachers and people that she meets with who want her to become fully realized, like whatever that means. Um, it doesn't have a super clear 
plot or structure or ending that's all i've got for you but i really enjoyed it and i gave it four stars i listened to it solely on audiobook which i never do um and i think that upon reread it could potentially be a five star and lastly i know some of you who know that i read this this month have been waiting for this to show up in the video because i haven't talked about this anywhere and you haven't heard any of my thoughts and this is also getting terrible ratings so i think by now you have realized that this is my favorite book of the month and it's also in my top 10 of the year and you much like what this happened with house of leaves everyone was like what the fuck are you talking about like is this a joke is this your book of the year it's happening again this is one of my favorite books of the year it's one of my favorite books of my life and i'm so glad because i was so fucking nervous about this you all set me up so much telling me like, oh, I don't know how you're gonna feel about this. Like, oh, I can't wait to see how you feel about this. Whoa, look out. And those of you who've been saying that and who absolutely hate this book, you probably just are like, what? Like, what? <laughs> I could not have loved this book anymore. I have never disliked a Stephen Graham Jones. He is officially one of my favorite authors. This, like, this is the one that solidified it. I'm so happy. Um, this is like a slasher story. I've seen everybody say that it's slow and that's the majority of reasons why people don't like it um this is exactly what i was expecting like this is this is the exact book that i thought it would be and it makes me so happy we're following this girl named jade and she is obsessed with the slasher genre and there are like essays in here this almost reads like um non-fiction it doesn't read like non-fiction but like i don't know how to explain it i need more books like this where there's a character who cares so much about something and is so passionate about something and it's all that they talk about and there are like portions of the book that are written like essays and articles from that character about how much they care about this topic so any recommendations you have like that i would really appreciate them um but she is convinced that uh, a slasher movie is playing out like in her hometown yes it's slow and she just talks to a lot of people throughout the book but i don't know i don't know i just loved it every person she interacted with um i loved how she was talking to them so in every like slasher there's a final girl and she's convinced that this one girl that she meets is the epitome of a final girl she's like you are the main character of my life like i'm a side character and i'm gonna help you fully realize like who you are in this story that I see building around me like this is the villain oh that's that guy who does that thing in every movie this like this is the plot structure and I know everything that's gonna happen and it's just so fucking fun I think a lot of this hinges on um nostalgia and people loving the slasher genre and like having a lot of experience with movies much like eight perfect murders by peter swanson spoils so many mystery novels and i feel like you have to care about those mystery novels to fully love that story um this spoils like so many different slashers that i love so much and like dissects them all which is just so fun to read and then i was worried that it wasn't gonna build to like be a true slasher by the end but oh my god it got even wilder than i was expecting um i shouldn't have been surprised because it's stephen graham jones and typically his books like just really go there but because of how slow and like for part of this i thought maybe it wasn't all really happening i just didn't know if we were gonna go there but we did and i just learned this is becoming a series which i don't know how i feel about but i will talk more about my thoughts and like spoiler thoughts in a live show i'm so excited that this one gets to be a live show uh because i picked it for the literally dead book club so you can expect that coming next weekend and i'm excited to have people on who have all different ratings uh for this book because i think it'll be a very interesting conversation but yeah i don't want to talk too much about it because you have another week to get through it and then we can really dive into all of my thoughts and all of the themes in this book that i loved so much so that's it those are the 16 things that i read in october let me know if you've read any of them any of your thoughts I love to hear everybody's opinion even if they completely differ from mine uh anything i've convinced you to read please let me know and any book recommendations i love to see and I'll see you later. Bye.